Hey guys, this is Neha from Webstack. I hope you all are doing well and in this video we are going to see an introduction to PHP. So in this video you will be learning about what is PHP, what are the basic features of it, who uses PHP in 2020 and some fundamentals of PHP language. So let's get started. Starting the video if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to Webstack and hit the bell to get all the notifications. So before diving into PHP, let's first check out the three layers that is present in the web development technologies. So we basically follow a three layer architecture in which first layer we have is the client side or you can say a presentation layer which contains almost everything which you see on your website like you see the forms which is having like user id password all the buttons that you see that is all the ui part that is user interface part so basically it is given by the client side and the languages that we use for client side is mentioned like html css javascript we can use all other front end languages in this client side layer and the third layer which you see here is the database layer or you can say it as a back end layer which will actually connect to your databases with the help of mysql or recl or the sql databases so these are the languages that you use to fetch the data from the database or to uh, just write something into database delete or do n number of stuff there so the next layer is the very important one that is called business logic layer so this is the layer uh, middle layer which actually connects your client with your server or you can say your front end with your back end so all the logics that you are going to write using any programming languages be it PHP be it Java Node.js or Python or anything else that code will be written in this layer which will actually connect your database or the data with your front end or the UI part so this is where PHP goes that is business layer now enough of talking about web development to sum up that i can simply say that we have client and we have server and basically the languages for web they are divided into these two parts so client side contains html css javascript ajax jquery all of these languages are being used here whereas in server side languages you have php perl ruby python java and so on so this constitutes your web development so let's now talk about what is php so php is a server side language as we have already seen in the previous slides and also as a fun fact php was developed in 1994 i know that's really old so this is a really old language that we are using and earlier it stands for something personal home page but now it's more of a recursive acronym uh, that stands for php hypertext preprocessor so php is widely used language and also it is an open source scripting language so it's really popular among the uh, developers who have just started to create the websites so if you are a fresher you will fall in love with php and also it is really amazing and it can be embedded simply inside html so if you already know html so that's all you need to know you just need to embed the php code inside your html as you can see an example here it says that inside the html body tag they have simply written the php tags and they are writing a simple print statement inside it so how easy it is now it is also a must for the students and industry professionals because when you are just starting out with web development it's really easy to learn this language as you do not need a big learning curve for uh, this php so now let's see what can php actually do so php is used to create dynamic web pages 
as I already told you that HTML, CSS and JavaScript is used to create your user interface or a front end. So PHP will make it alive by taking the dynamic data from the databases. So there comes the business logic layer because it is connecting from the database and it is putting that data on my browser. So it helps in creating the dynamic web pages. Also, it is helpful in like collecting the form data. You can just take some registration form. You can take the data with the help of that form and so on. And also you can have the sessions and cookies with PHP. And very importantly, you can create, read, update and delete data from the databases. That means you can perform this CRUD operation on the back end with the help of PHP. So now what are the main areas of PHP? So it is known as a server side scripting. So definitely it's a language which we can use on the server side and it, it's been used and the main purpose of PHP is that only, but also it is used in command line scripting. Command line scripting simply means that you don't need uh, the browser or the server. You'd simply need a PHP parser which will parse your PHP code and it will execute and give the result. Like you can run this uh, command line uh, in the uh, Linux machines or Linux environments where you just write the scripts and that will get executed without any browser, without any servers there. With each emerging version of PHP, it's improving a lot. And now we can also create the desktop applications using this PHP language. And now let's see what are the different features of PHP. So PHP is really easy to learn as I have already told you in the beginning. And also the major advantage is it's cross-platform. Cross-platform simply means that you can run it on either Linux machine or Mac machine or Windows. You can port your programs anywhere on any machines. Also, it supports multiple servers like Apache, Nginx, Tomcat and many more. And also the major advantage is it's a mix of procedural and object-oriented programming. So you can also have object-oriented programming in PHP, which is a bonus point here. And adding to these features, also it supports variety of databases that are available in the market. Like we have MySQL, we have Postgres SQL, Oracle, Sybase and DB2. So these are the databases that you can use with PHP. So let's check out some fundamentals of PHP. So as you have already seen that PHP code is written inside PHP tags and what are these tags and what do they look like? So PHP tags can be written with angular brackets and question mark and also PHP and then you have to close that tags there and inside you can write any PHP code you want. Like for an example, you can see here we have a PHP tag and an echo statement inside it that says I am a standard tag. So echo is nothing but it works uh, same as your printf statements in C. So here we are simply using echo statement and also there is a shorthand for this echo statement and these PHP tags you can simply write the angular brackets question mark equals to and then simply the statement inside the double quotes you don't need to write echo at all here let's see some data types of php so data types are basically divided into uh, two categories that is primitive data type and the reference data type so let's first see what are the different primitive data types we have in php so PHP is having integers, as you already know, integers will take integer values in a variable and a variable is defined by a dollar symbol inside PHP, as you can see in this example. Also, we have strings inside it that you simply need to write in double quotes. And then we have Boolean values like true, false, and then we have float. Uh, data type which takes the value or you can see the floating point values or the decimal values and the next is undefined when you don't define a variable then the default value that is stored is undefined there now let's move towards the reference data types reference data types are something 
where direct value is not stored but actually the reference to that value is getting stored. That means the address of that value gets stored inside that variable. So first reference type in PHP is arrays and arrays is a collection of the values multiple values you can take for the same data type inside it like there is an example here for fruits we have defined this variable with a dollar symbol and there is a method called array so inside this array method i am simply just writing the values this is a string array which contains fruit names and also the values inside it actually they are given some index in array and those indexes always start with zero so like apple is at index 0, banana at index 1 and similarly orange is at index 2. Another type of reference data type is objects. So this is something related to your object oriented programming where you need to create a class. As you can see here an example is provided that is we have created a simple class. Inside it I am declaring just two variables and then you can have any functions inside it also functions can contain the arguments and this is how you just create a class here and object creation is really simple you simply need to write new operator now let's talk about something which is really famous that is php frameworks now before going into frameworks so let me give you a brief idea about what is actually a framework so framework is something which makes your coding or your task while creating the project easier because it contains different methods and also the dummy code or you can say the model code is available with you by which you can just start coding and you don't need to worry about those nitty gritty details because you have this framework and this is actually developed by developers only uh, so, so that your development process can be made easier. So let's check out what frameworks are available in the market for PHP. So as you can see here we have different frameworks but these are the top notch frameworks that are being used for php laravel is the most popular framework of php so if you want to learn this framework of php you can go and check out my playlist of this laravel i will provide the link in the description box below and other than this laravel we have several other frameworks that is yai we have cake php symphony code igniter which is also one of the most popular one and also we have zend framework now let's check out who are the competitors of this php so there are various competitors like python we have asp.net golang and also node.js if you see the popularity then node.js is the most popular among these languages and most people feel that PHP is not really being used these days or it is an obsolete language but that's not true because PHP my friends is not dead in 2020 as well. Every 8 websites out of 10 they are using this PHP as it was the oldest language and also it's really easy to code and learn. So now let's see who actually uses this PHP language. We have the major websites that is being actually created using this PHP. Among those, some of the websites here are Yahoo, then we have Joomla and also the biggest blogging system that is WordPress. So can you imagine WordPress is created in PHP and also your Wikipedia is created in that and also it's deep enough to run the largest social media application that is Facebook. So Facebook is made using this PHP. It still uses PHP for its backend. So you can just imagine how powerful PHP is that such a big organization is using it. So if you want to learn more about the PHP, you can go and check out my playlist for PHP in which you will get how to send the mails, how to take the data, how to perform CRUD applications on the databases and so on. So I'll provide the link in the description box below. You can go and check out that playlist. 
So that's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and got the basics of PHP. So if you like it, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So we'll see you in the next video.